this character from the Eminence and Shadow. We're going to start doing reactions of a different type of content. This guy basically makes videos where it's like a PowerPoint slide. And it has like important details from the show that I want to read out loud. Okay, ready? Greece. This count who was forced to by the cult to work for them. I think this guy is the guy that like kidnapped Claire. I'm not sure if he actually did, but that's just from episode two. He is 0.05% of Sid's power. Henchman of the cult. Okay. We have Goldo or Goldie. 0.1% of Sid's power. He's a magic swordsman. Don't, rem don't re remember him? He has the fucking sword that gets carried by the trolley. He's a mediocre swordsman that only fights weak opponents. That's why he has an undefeated record because he never fights anyone stronger. Next one. Alexia. Coming it hot at the bottom three. 0.1% of Sid's power. How is this guy getting these figures? I don't fucking know. She is the princess of Midgar. Emphasis on mid. Alexia's magic and swordsmanship are weak, but she continues to improve. I seriously think at this rate, Alexia might become stronger than Iris. They might even fight each other in the future. And like Sid's still giving Alexia like private lessons. I straight up think that she might even come up with her own I'm Atomic one day. Okay, next up, Gamma. Only 0.4%? I thought Gamma, as like a Shadow Garden member, she'd be way higher up. So she's 0.4% of Sid's power. Shadow Garden member. Gamma possesses tremendous magic power, but too clumsy to use it. I think of terms of like base stats and even like raw mana quantity, she has the most, right? I think that was explained in that one episode in season two where she fought those members and she was just so strong that she could just tank all the hits. Mary, 0.6% of Sid's power. A vampire hunter, which is hilarious because it's like, you're a vampire yourself, but you're a vampire that hunts vampires, kind of like Zoro in One Piece. Mary's an ethical vampire who refuses to drink human blood. Except Claire. She, she, did, she did drink the shit out of Claire here. All right, here we go. This is Claire coming in at 0.7% of Sid's power. Just a swordsman. Older sister of Sid Kagano and Prodigy Dark Knight. She is like the strongest of. Is she actually the strongest Dark Knight right now? I mean, if you compared like base Claire and base Oriana, who would win? I would think that Oriana would win. But maybe Claire is that built different. I'm not comparing Oriana now with Aurora's powers. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not comparing like Claire with Oriana's powers or Oriana right now with the Rose, you know, the Shadow Garden powers. I'm talking like base form. Like, in the beginning of Eminence and Shadow. I don't really know. Next one. Xenon. Okay. <laughs> Xenon is 0.85% of Sid's power. Diablos is cult member. Xenon's skill in swordsmanship was way above average for a Dark Knight. The, the fiancé to Alexia. This motherfucker was so trash. But I'm actually very thankful for Xenon. You know why? Because he was the first one to give us the I am atomic moment. Which is a fucking legendary moment. God bless you, Xenon Griffey. Anderose! Right. The Velgalta Empire. I sometimes forget that other empires in this like world exist, right? And it was like, coming in at 0.9% of Xenon. I don't know if this is based Xenon or not. I see the Awakened Xenon here. If this is actually Awakened Xenon because he used this picture, that's kind of insane that Claire is able to compete with an Awakened Xenon. And Anerose as well, coming in stronger than that, right? Anerose is a renowned fighter from the Velgalta Empire. Will we ever get there? Eh, it'd be nice to see the Empire there. Right after Anderoza comes in with Rose. I mean, really? R White Demon is stronger? And this is the fucking bodyguard. Lawless, really? I don't know. Because Rose got powers. Wait. You're telling me Rose is stronger than Gamma right now? Wait. Really? Rose is actually str Now, I don't know if this guy is bullshitting. Like, where is he getting these numbers from? I don't fucking know. I just see that this video gets a lot of views. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll just react to it. But really? Rose is stronger than Gamma? In combat? Probably. But I'm just thinking like raw, like power? I don't know. Rose received her power directly from Shadow and trained in Alexandria. That's right. One of the two members, right? Victoria and Rose. Very two people, right? Few people that actually got powers directly. Now we have the white demon. <laughs> the white demon. Okay, Guys, be respectful in chat, okay? 
I don't really know if this is true or not, but we're still having fun. The white demon comes in at 1.1%. It's its power, okay? Crimson's watch dog. This dude massacred an entire knight's order by himself, but it doesn't really matter. Why? Because he got fucking off screen so fucking quick by Shadow. Coming in next is Getan at 1.3% of its power. He is the henchman of the cult. Holy shit, he's weaker than Ada. <laughs> Getan is strong enough to combat John Smith for a while. In the manga, apparently he actually did fight for a longer time. In the anime, it was over really quickly. Okay, we got Ada here. Ada is the research scientist who is apparently stronger than Rose. Getan, everyone. I mean, yeah, I could believe that. We haven't really seen her fight, but she is like main scientist. She's not supposed to fight, but I bet she could be pretty strong in the fight. She has all these different like experimentations. Uh, she's a research scientist and her intellect makes her very dangerous. Coming in next right after Ada. Only 0.1% stronger, by the way. Olivier's clone did this. Sorry, the actual elf hero. Olivier's clones wields a tiny fraction of the original power. Yeah, it's a clone. It's not the actual hero. Holy shit! Iris is stronger than Getan. Iris is stronger than Gamma. I is Iris is stronger than Rose Oriana. Iris is strong. Could Iris actually fight Olivia's clone? What? Can she? Can I? I don't know. Two percent of its power. <laughs> Princess of Midgar. <laughs> Iris was regarded as the most powerful knight in Midgar. Not much to say if you're the kingdom of fucking mid. Okay, next one. New coming in stronger than Iris. New is now officially stronger than Ada and Gamma. New is only 2.2% of Sid's power, okay? Shadow Garden member, right? That's right. She's the one of the named members. 8 to 25. Shadow Garden's master interrogator and Gamma's bodyguard. Next up, Lutheran. I think this is Sherry Barnett's um adopt the foster dad, right? So this is the guy that straight up kills Sherry Barnett's mom in front of Sherry Barnett and then gaslights Sherry and it's like, hey, it's okay, I'll be your new dad now. Former Knights around and member and Pushin Festival champion. Now, Pushin Festival champion title is not that important in my opinion, because I feel like it just gets handed out to fucking everybody. Like, okay, Iris is one. Claire is one. Does this mean anything? Not really if you compare it to Shadow, but Lutheran coming in at 2.5% of Sid's power. Right after Lutheran, we're coming in with Victoria, the recent hottest, newest member of Shadow Garden, 3% of Sid's power, 559. Five, she's a powerful elf. Oh, she's an elf? She's an elf whose abilities are up to standards of the Seven Shadows. I did not know she's an elf. Next up, Yukime. 3.5% of Sid's power. So I guess the Getan that we compared back then. I mean, we saw how easily Yukime overpowered, you know, um, Getan. That when he didn't take the pills, right? So I guess that makes sense. Yukime. Why the fuck is Juggernaut ahead of Yukime here? What the fuck, dude? Only a few. Only a few men. I think she's trying. Only a few men could stand a chance against her charm. So she's here to just seduce and suck. Okay. Next. We got the Juggernaut. Oh, sorry. Yukime is also known as the Lawless City's Monarch. Now we have the three pillars of the Lawless City here. Juggernaut, right? He managed to withstand Delta's onslaught for a few days. 3.6% to... Wait. Few days? Few days? I thought Delta went up and he's like, Blood Jugga Jugga! I'm gonna take your head off! And she just took it and she started uh, just a uh into the sky. But uh, apparently they... Apparently they fought. Yeah, the video is getting hella long. I never needed to have an extra video. We're only halfway in. <laughs> I told you with the amount I fucking talk, bro. Crimson. 3.7% of Sid's power. The bro that got... Why the fuck is Nelson coming in after Crimson with his bald ass head shining? Nelson is a member of the rounds. Like, he's an actual member of the Knights of the Rounds table, right? I guess we do have to respect him. Okay, Crimson was a powerful vampire with an influence in the Lawless City, right? Keyword was, because he got fucking I'm Atomic silently while he was doing his fucking monologue. Next up, we got the Baldi Nelson, the 11th seed Knight of the Rounds of the Cult of Diablos. 5% of Sid's power. And you know what? 
he is bald. He is old. He might be a little chubby in the spandex suit. But still, I thought he was a hilarious character. This show goes hard with the bald jokes. And like, he's an actual member of the round, right? It's very rare that they ever show an actual member. They're usually just like, oh, I'm going to be the future member of the rounds. Like fucking Zenon Griffey and fucking Perv Asa. But Mordred and Nelson, one of the few round knights that we've actually seen. Next up. We got Epsilon and Beta, both coming in at 6% of Sid's power. I think he might have done this. Anime Stats did this intentionally because these two, actually, what's the word? These two are, uh, uh, they're rivals, right? Of all the Shadow Garden members, they're actually kind of like rivaling each other. Epsilon is an elf who is the best at controlling her magic amongst the seven shadows. That's right. That's why she's got the, you know, that's how she does the slime titties and ass. And also, she can also cure possession along with Alpha. And Beta is an elf who's a definition of true generalist. That's right. She doesn't really have a specialty. She just does everything really well. Jack of all trades. Beatrix. Now, it's hard for me to believe that Beatrix... Uh, well, when we compare Alpha to Beatrix, right? right? That's when Alpha is much stronger. But is Beatrix really stronger than Alpha... Uh, sorry, than Beta and Epsilon? I thought that, like, the Shadow Garden girls were much leagues ahead of anyone else. Because they got direct training from Shadow. So Beatrix couldn't even be compared. I don't really know. Beatrix, 6.5% of Sid's power. She's the war goddess, an elf whose strength and speed rivals those of the Seven Shadow. Coming up next, right after Beatrix, we got Zeta, a girl we hardly ever get to see. We only get to see her from Master of Garden and Kagajitsu content, right? Zeta comes in at 8% of Sid's power, the most talented member of Shadow Garden. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> most talented member. No, seriously, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I, I, people have been saying that, um, Zeta actually had, like, really good talent. She's just good at everything. That's why she gets sent on, like, solo missions by herself. She learns really fast. I don't really know, but we hardly ever get to see Zeta. It's unfortunate. Next up, we got Delta. Delta coming in at 10% of Sid's power. Physically the most powerful member of the Shadow Garden. I think that is very true. It's kind of cool that, you know, the fucking... The Mutt is ranked higher than the Molly Cat. These two are always just bickering at each other in the, in the Kagejutsu episodes. Then comes Alpha. 14% of Sid's power. Shadow Garden member, the strongest fighter in the Shadow Garden and leader as well. Then it's Queen Elizabeth. 18%. Shit, Alpha and Elizabeth wasn't that far off, huh? Al what the fuck? Okay, I don't know who the fuck this person is. I'm gonna ignore that I even saw this. Elizabeth is 18% of Sid's power. A vampire who destroyed three countries beyond repair in three days. That's fucked up. We're gonna, we're gonna skip that part, okay? Miss Dragon. We do know Miss Dragon. Because Miss Dragon is the legendary dragon that Shadow had to defeat. That's a lot of armpit from Aurora. Anyways, Miss Dragon is someone we had to defeat in order to, like, have an HQ base in Alexandria. I believe Miss Dragon, even, like, after we defeated it, it's, like, tradition that whoever is strong enough to defeat the dragon is bestowed upon the dragon's breath, which is the stinky dragon breath. So he just went, like, oh, onto Shadow, and Shadow is like, the fuck is nasty? But Miss Dragon coming at 30% of Sid's, uh, Sid's power. A legendary dragon who protects and uh, Alexandria. I didn't know that he's actually still around and still protecting. Aurora comes in at 80% of Sid's power. A mysterious person from the ancient past who plunged the world into chaos. And I mean, it's a mysterious person, but I think it's heavily implied that it's clearly Diabolus, right? And goddamn, her armpit is fucking strong. And finally, Sid Kagano. 100% of Sid's power. No fucking way. You're telling me that Sid himself is 100% of his own power? Fucking crazy. The protagonist who lives out his unfulfilled Chunibyo fantasies because he is the one who lurks in the shadows to hunt the shadows. Now, I'm not sure exactly how credible these power scaling sources are. Where did he get these numbers? Did he do some kind of research and testing to see that he's, you know, new is 0.2% stronger than Iris? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't think so. It's fun edits. It gives us a little bit more context too. I think this is fun type of content. If you enjoyed this type of content too, please let me know so that we can do more of it. Go subscribe to his channel, Anime Stats, and like his videos.
if you did. <laughs>